Hi, I just wanted to do a simple video on um, how to use Photoshop to edit video. Um, a lot of people will be familiar with using Photoshop um, for editing photos, uh, but uh, it also allows you to edit uh, videos with regards to um, all of the controls that are in um, in Photoshop. So whether or not you want to um, to, to adjust things like exposure or um, highlights, shadows, um, sharpening, denoise. Um, most of the features that are available in Photoshop can be applied to uh, directly to a video. Um, obviously you, uh, you, you have other um, specific uh, video editing tools um, that, that, that do the same. Um, that, it's just that uh, I prefer to use um, Photoshop purely because I'm familiar with um, with Photoshop. I've been using it for years on photos, on photo editing. Um, so I, I prefer to use when I when I'm adjusting, um, especially around colors and levels and things like that. Um, doing it in um, in Photoshop, which is a product that that I know. Um, uh, rather than in something like DaVinci Resolve, um, again, it's 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 total um, up to individual's preference. But uh, for for people that um, uh, that have got Photoshop, um, then um, it's um, it's a little video really to say that you you don't need a specific video editor. You can still use Photoshop to do to do what you want. So um, primarily, it's aimed towards uh, editing footage on uh, from the E4K cameras, uh, E4K Plus, um, but it, the same principles apply to, um, to, to, to any video that, you, that you've got. Okay, so um, what I'm going to, 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 to choose is this video here of a sunset that I did um, in, uh, down in Cornwall. Um, so if we right click uh, the video and do open with and select uh, Adobe Photoshop. Um, the way that Photoshop works is that um, it takes the video and breaks that video down into frames. Um, and then any adjustments, it treats it like a photo and it will uh, adjust that photo um, and it will adjust it for every frame uh, that's in the uh, in the video so if you've got a, a, a video that's uh, been shot in 30 frames a second um, then for every second of that video there is 30 individual photos um, so obviously if you if you've got a uh, a video that's uh, half an hour um, you there's a hell of a lot of uh, video frames within there um, so you got you you, you don't want to edit all of those one by one because that would take you um, take a, a lifetime to do. So when you first go into Photoshop, um, the first thing that you'll um, see is that it's put it uh, it's put the video into a video group at the bottom. Now you can cut and um, edit the video um, using the cut uh, option down here, so you can choose. Where you want the um, the cut part to be, and then you can cut it. And just like any video editor, you can um, add videos on, or um, cut bits out, or whatever you want to do. Um, me personally, I I don't bother with the um, uh, the editing of a video in that way. I I just purely use it as a color um, and levels and uh, adjustment. Um, tool so uh, correcting uh, and getting it to visually look um, how I want it to be but I do it on a clip by clip basis so I put a whole clip in I uh, I adjust it to, to what I want and and then I export it back out again and um, and then I'll use other tools to to join them all up together and and to um, cut them into the size that I want and to put transitions and things like that on. Um, there are all the tools that are far better suited for that. 
Okay, so we're, we're in Photoshop. We've got this video group. Now, on the video group, you notice that um, the layer um, that's at the bottom is blue. Uh, now, blue uh, is uh, is the default editing mode, and it, it, it indicates that um, if you make any changes um, to it or any adjustments to, to it, um, it will only change the frame that you're on. It won't change the entire video. So we don't want to be changing every single frame. So um, this mode's not no no good for doing edit. You need to make sure that you're not that it's not in blue because if you start editing, you're not going to change the entire video. You're only going to change the frame that you're on. So that first frame there that's listed um, or shown, you would edit it. But then if you went and clicked on the timeline and moved to a different frame that would the, the the edits wouldn't have taken on there okay so to be able to say to photoshop i want to make some adjustments and i want to adjust it to all of the frames um, what you do is you right click the layer on the right hand side and you go to convert to smart object okay so once you've done that it will turn it purple and purple indicates that any no matter where you are on this timeline um, any adjustments or any edits that you make will apply across all of the frames both before that point and after that point so first things we're, we're what we're going to do in um, what I will do on a, on a clip is I usually adjust a clip for the brightest or the darkest part of, of the clip so in this instance, it's a it's a sunset. Um, it's a it pans from left to right, um, and we can see at the beginning um, the sun's not quite in in shot. So it's down the beach, um, and then as it pans from left to right, we get so far along, and the sun comes into into play again. It's pretty bright, and then um, towards the end. Um, sun's in the, in the middle so what I would do is, is I would uh, make my adjustments based upon it, it um, being uh, at its extremes rather than being at this point at the beginning because that one is pretty well exposed but if we made adjustments to that we don't know how it's going to look with the sun direct sun shining so if we reduced for example if we didn't reduce highlights very much and then when we got um, to the bit where it looks directly at the sun it might be just too bright um, the sun might be just too bright for the for the for the video footage so you're, you're better off adjusting to your to, to your extremes which is uh, in this case is towards the end with the sun um, bursting through so what we're going to do is edit that and then we kind of know that if that looks all right we the, the rest of it uh, should be okay in some instances it might not be um, it, it, it may be that you have to um, chop the the file up and then treat them separately but majority of the time is um, just work to you to, to the to the extreme part okay so that's that's okay what's on screen now we've, we've got the sun and um, we've also got some dark areas along along this um, this rock face um, down at the bottom so um, we'll adjust based on that um, the, f the first thing we need to do though is um, what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a LUT file which is a color correction file um, generally speaking a LUT file is um, is a file that has pre defined corrections um, to colors um, and also to um, to, cer to, to, to certain um, settings that will allow you to achieve a certain look that you're looking for now there's two ways a LUT file can be used you can use a LUT file to correct colors um, so to get uh, the, the footage from a, ca a particular camera um, and bring it in line with a, an industry standard. Um, the, the reason you would do that is if you've got multiple um, cameras that 
uh, from different makes and you could uh, if you're working to a, a, a set standard so say a video uh, passport color checker video passport um, which has all the a little color blocks on there and it can define uh, the adjustments that's needed to get to that color palette and then if you were to do that on all of your footage then you know that they no matter which camera you used you would end up with the same look or the same starting point for the any adjustments that you want um, also people use LUT files to achieve a certain look or a film look so um, if you've seen um, films like the matrix which um, which is very if you look at it very uh, got a very green look to it everything's got a, a like a green tinge to it um, throughout the film um, when, when when they're in in the matrix and that that can be achieved by having a lot that's biased towards the um, towards green and uh, cyan and um, and uh, I think it's called teal um, and and you apply it and it gives you gives you a particular look. It, in this instance, there's um, I've created a, a LUT file that's located on um, e, the E Technology Facebook page, which um, which is for the E4K plus um, and in essence what I've done is, is I've used a color checker video passport um, uh, color checker card um, uh, filmed it with um, with the E4K plus uh, and then I've used software to generate a uh, lookup table which is what, what a LUT is um, and what that does is that um, with the E4K or the E4K plus um, cameras, um, if you shot in um, Ye color um, profile, you should be able to apply the LUT and it will take that footage um, and it will apply it to uh, the colors that are on that lookup uh, color passport that um, that I put in front of the camera and it will adjust all of the colors accordingly to um, to match that palette so um, it, you know each color like red will be adjusted and blue and yellow and cyan and so on and so forth um, total total preference really for people is uh, I, I prefer to apply it um, and then I build the uh, adjustments up to 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 get the look that that I want. Um, some people may be happy with the look that is um, that, that, that the the video looks like straight out of the camera. Um, uh, personally, I think it's a little uh, biased. Uh, the the latest one is um, a, as a, corrected the the bias towards red and and orange but um it seems to have gone just a little bit uh, the other way and is now more biased towards green and blue but not not uh, in a bad way um it still looks pretty good uh, majority of the time but if you have got a lot of uh, green and cyan in your, your shot it can um it can look um uh, a little wrong so um, it's total preference uh, if people want to use the look file it's uh, it's on the Facebook page and um, you download it uh, put it on your machine and, and uh, use any of the Adobe products um, or um, uh, DaVinci uh, or a any product that, that allows the applying of LUTs so th this step you, if you don't want to do it you can just skip this one but for people who do want to use the lot then um, I'll quickly go through how to do that so we've we've got us um, we've got us frame that we're going to edit um, which is with a Sun direct we've converted it to a smart object so it's so well, the change we make to that one frame is going to be changed to all of the frames <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do now then is I'm going to apply that lot um, to to get this um, uh, color balance that that uh, I prefer and to do that you do image and then you go to adjustments and then you go to color lockup 
Now, on this screen, you'll get uh, three options, 3D LUT, abstract, and um, a device link. So the one we want is the 3D LUT file, which says load 3D LUT file. If I drop down that uh, menu, you can see there's a whole load of ones already in there. So um, these are predefined ones from for certain cameras or certain film looks. So like you've got Fuji and Kodak and so on. Um, you can choose those and they will adjust everything uh, based upon them. But uh, what we're going to do is we're, we're just going to uh, click on the load 3D LUT at the top and then it will allow you to go and browse. Now, um, wherever you download that file and save it onto your machine, um, that's where you want to point it to. So I've got mine in this color checker directory in, under the E4K Plus and the file I've got, which is on the um, on, on the the uh, Facebook page is U4K plus underscore two and so on. Incidentally, it, although it says U4K plus, it, it can be used on the U4K. They're 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 the same. They're essentially the same color uh, color table. So um, all we're going to do is select that, and click uh, click on load. Now, if you watch the screen, because we've got this preview box ticked, it should apply. Uh, the adjustments to to the screen so if I move this slightly out of the way so if I untick the preview it'll go back to how it was and then click the preview so uh, straight away you can see there's a there's a difference I mean a lot of the difference is the de desaturation so you, it's actually taking um, taking some of those saturated colors right down um, uh, like I said earlier, it's a little bit too uh, oversaturated um, on on the colours um, for me on the um, uh, straight out of the camera. So um, so what what the LUT does is uh, it it adjusts the colours um, from that colour checker card that um, I've used previously. It adjusts them accordingly. So first thing it does is reduces that saturation and vibrance and um, uh, it, straight out of uh, straight away it, it looks desaturated and and grayed out which um, we will we will sort out in post-production um, you don't have to worry but it all it's doing is it's setting it to a um, a, a flatter um, uh, starting point for you to uh, then get the, the the actual look and feel that you want so um, what we're going to do is click OK and that applies um, the color lookup to, uh, to to this frame. Um, so if we look down on the right hand side, you can see you see you've got uh, the layer one smart filters, and then you've got a color lookup. So you can click on the eye, and it'll go back and show you. So that color lookup's no longer applied. Uh, if we click it again, it applies it back on there. Okay, so that's that's how you adjust the or, or um, uh, apply the the LUT U4K uh, LUT file. Um, we're now going to go in and we're going to edit uh, edit it, the, the the file to to, uh, to 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 be how we want it. So um, again, in in Photoshop, you um, you can use any of the functions. So you could add another layer, and you could um, uh, go down, and you can add um, any of these so you change levels curves whatever you're familiar with you you can do um, personally what I like to do is I like to instead of using those I like to apply uh, the uh, raw um, filter so if we do filter and then do camera raw filter okay that takes us into um, the camera raw editor that um, that comes from Adobe, and um, for, for me, this has got everything uh, all in one place for you to be able to adjust. So, first of all, um, what what do you do? So, to for me, the first stage is to set the white balance. Um, <coughs> actually, the the, um, the the majority of the footage from from the E4K and E4K plus 
the white balance is not too bad um, it doesn't need a huge amount of uh, adjustment as some cameras will but a um, number of ways you can do this um, you can use this pipette in the top left hand corner which is white balance tool you click on that and then you select somewhere that's grey or white but not too bright um, and it, it'll set the white balance based on that now the whole point of white balance is, is that you get the right um, color temperature um, and tint to, um, to to the picture so that whites look white um, if you don't get the right uh, white balance then you, you all your colors will be off um, you know you, you, it'll either look too yellow or it'll look too green too magenta too blue um, <clears throat> so a number of ways you can do it well one is you can use this tool so we've got the pipette and so the way the pipette works is you click on somewhere that's gray uh, or, or white um, but if it's too bright it'll it'll complain and say that it's it's too it's too uh, exposed now the problem is with gray is that um, and, and these rocks in particular is that there's a lot of colors in there there's a lot of greens there's a lot of magentas in there reflection off the sun so um, just clicking on them is very, it can always always be difficult to get the color that you want so what you can do is you can keep clicking to different places different areas to get what you think the correct color is or, um, or white balance is to, to what you saw when you took the photo um, so I mean, there's a white bit up there we can uh, go on um, so again it's not 100% accurate um, it's but it's it's you've got to uh, try and get the level um, that is is right um, to what you saw um, so was it as was it as for example there was it as bright as that um, you know that's got a lot of uh, a lot of sunlight reflecting off of areas but we could click in other areas and you can see that it hasn't got as much and it's like there for example it looks a lot duller um, so, so again it, it's, it's very difficult um, the other way to, instead of using the pipette is um, uh, and a lot of the times it's um, the way that I would uh, do it is um, I would push um, these two sliders at the bottom to 100% uh, which is the vibrance and the saturation okay so that kind of gives you um, a bit more to look at because previously it was uh, fairly flat but now we've got um, because we've pushed the vibrance and saturation the, where there is color it's 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 over um, over saturated it so that you can see where that color is so if you was to click that pipette down here now uh, you can see there's greens down there there's purples there's blues um, so they're not really um, good areas to, to choose from so what I would do in something like this because there's so many reflections I wouldn't use the pipette what I'd do is I'd push these vibrance and saturation to 100% but then what I'd do is I'd adjust these sliders at the top so on temperature if you go to the right it goes it adds more yellow if it goes to the left it adds more blue um, zero is your level um, point and then the tint one if you go to the left it adds green and if you go to the right it adds magenta okay so what we want to do is um, first of all is and I know we've got um, a lot of saturation and vibrance on but what we want to do is we want to reduce um, uh, it or, or get areas that we know aren't um, a specific color so um, for example these cliff faces now there are areas that have got um, magenta on them but what what you want to do is um, if you look as, as I gradually go to the left so so there's a lot of magenta on there so if I start going to the left you'll start seeing that the magenta lessens but then at some point it starts turning green 
Okay, so what we don't want is we don't want it turning green for a start because it's they're not green green rocks. They're they're um, the grey rocks with with um, with sunlight reflecting off them. So, and and similarly, if you start going the other way, they're just just too too much magenta on there. Um, and the, uh, what we need to do is get the balance right. So, um, the other indicator is is the sand as well. So the sand over here, we know that sand should be um, sand colour, and it shouldn't be green, and it shouldn't be. Uh, magenta so if we adjust the um, the slider to so that if we look on the on the beach there's a bit too much um, magenta on there so the magenta has gone and it looks like sand again down on these rocks there's a lot of gray areas on this side over here um, there's still a little bit of color uh, which is reflection from the sun which I would expect greens down here which it was it is green anyway um, but the key area is this is this sand over here so we've got most of the magenta out of that if we uh, went to minus five um, it's starting to go green so I think about either minus four or minus five I'm gonna go with minus four yeah let's leave it at minus four um, move on to the next one which is the the temperature uh, above and again if we go if we go to the left it goes blue and to the right it goes yellow so again this slider we you can see that that magenta started um, creeping back in as I'd gone to the towards the blue and if I go to the yellow then it literally everything starts turning turning yellow so personally I would leave it as zero uh, because I think that's actually giving us the closest um, uh, level of uh, that looks most like sand than than if I add it uh, more yellow or or blue so I think I'm gonna leave that um, so uh, again it's, it's down to the look that you want to get overall um, and for me that's um, the sand area is, is one what I want to get to so we're now going to set those vibrance and saturation back down to zero so it's desaturated it back down again um, okay so We've now got a desaturated uh, picture, but we've set as white balance as uh, as temperature is okay, but as uh, tint was was um, uh, slightly too 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 much towards um, magenta, so we've we've backed it off four points. What we're now uh, going to start looking at is is looking at the amount of light that's on the um, uh, on the picture, and also the amount of shadow um, uh, and uh, seeing how we can adjust that to get the picture looking the best um, I always start with um, with the histogram at the top so the histogram at the top um, um, it's fairly uh, fairly simple to to, uh, to understand um, the, the histogram at the top displays the uh, the amount of light that's um, uh, that's on the the actual page but to the left of the Instagram uh, the very left hand point is black and, and you can get that if you if I highlight at the end you see it says blacks and then at the very right hand side is whites so the right hand side of it is 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 pure white the, the left hand side of it is black um, and then in between you've got your highlights, exposures, and shadows, and so on. Um, so the easiest way to think of it is that the, the this histogram um, should cover the entire um, 
uh, the entire graph. The, uh, so it should, instead of starting where it's starting, there's a bit of a gap. You can see there's a bit of a gap between the where the where this starts going up and the end of the graph. So we need this part here to come more towards the black. And uh, this side, we need these end, this end bit of the graph to go more towards the end of the the axes to to the graph over there, which is white. So, it, in effect, is that there's there's chunks of um, black and chunks of white missing out of that picture. So we need to take that all of those colours and stretch them to each end of the graph to give you your full um, colour palette. So to do that, um, we use um, the black and the white sliders. Okay, so the easiest way uh, you can do it is just slide the black slider to the left. And if you keep going, you'll see that it'll start going off the page. And in the very top left hand corner, you've got a little yellow um, uh, triangle thing here. Now that's when that lights up. That's warning you that you're now clipping, and clipping means that you're losing data. Um, you've gone too far towards the black, and it started losing data. So you don't want to do that. You want to get right up to the point where it doesn't light up, uh, but it goes to the end of the graph, which is at that point. Um, you can get visually. You can you can actually see that, but if you're on a PC, if you hold down the Alt key and click on the slider, it will show you. Uh, if you see, see in the bottom left-hand corner, you've got um, uh, you've got some blue bits, and that th that's the that's the black level. So the more I go to the left and it starts clipping, it, it starts drawing in the blacks. Um, so what you want is just at the point where it's not clipping. Um, just got a little bit in the corner and then you do the same with the whites you come over uh, to the right on the whites stretching it until it will start clipping so now that top right hand corner has gone green which is up here which is telling you that I like clipping warning so what you need to do um, is just back off just slightly uh, and you get the um, the graph is now uh, fully to the blacks and fully to the whites and spread across so that's the blacks and the whites adjusted um, uh, so well, the whole point of that is means that uh, areas that have been recorded as being black are now showing as being black and not a gray color uh, and the whites should be uh, should be showing as whites and and not a uh, an off white gray color um, so the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to look, uh, I usually look at highlights. So highlights are the areas that are excessively um, uh, bright in, in a picture. Um, and if we if we take the highlight um, slider and push it to the right, you can see that the excessive bright area is the sun. And as you push it to the right, it gets brighter. And as you bring it to the left, it um, it gets rid of some of that glare, but it also gives you more definition around the sky, around the, the around the sun. So you, I mean, the, the sun is always going to be a blown eye light. It's always going to be so bright that your camera can't record what's in the middle of it. Um, so you're always going to um, never going to be able to to get all of the the data that's in there. Um, but the surrounding area around the sun, um, as you lessen those highlights, you should get more information back. So on, on something like a sunset, I would generally always pull the highlights right back to get as much definition. So you're not losing any details in, in the foreground, in down in the cliffs or anything. You're just, it's just all in the sky. So it's like pulling that back. Um, right down to minus 100 um, and it's given you more definition in the in the sky um, so that's highlights um, I'm happy with that we can't I personally would probably prefer to go even more to the left but we can't that's as far as we can go um, the next one is shadows and shadows are the 
dark areas that have got information. So, um, so these are uh, the a lot of the areas are in the in the foreground where you've got uh, between these rocks and in shadow areas. Um, so if we if we again it's a zero. If we push it to the right, you can see keep pushing it and you can some of those dark areas you can really see into if you went the other way it just gets darker and darker um, that, that may be the you know how it looked and, and that's what the, the look that you're going for um, what uh, what you need to be careful with on shadows though is that if you push shadows right up if I did that plus 100 um, adding shadow or increasing shadow uh, areas will give you uh, more digital noise uh, to the um, to, to, to the to the actual uh, picture. So, if we were to zoom in on some of these areas, because we've um, if we click on the, the zoom panel up here and zoom right in. Um, you can see now there's quite a lot of digital noise that started appearing. Um, uh, the, the noise has already always been there, but it, it shows up more. Um, so you can see colour noise around uh, around here, see, uh, and um, uh, and almost like a smearing uh, kind of look to it. So um, if we reduce that back down and um, put that to fit in view. So on on the shadows, I I am going to um, push the shadows up because I like I like to be able to see um, to see these these rocks. I want to see this definition in these rocks here, but not pushing it too far. So I'll I'll leave that at 54. Um, okay, so so we just adjusted the the shadows. Um, what uh, generally I would do next is um, there's a, a, a newish feature in Photoshop called um, dehaze. Um, now, one of the things that's really missing on that picture so far is contrast. And now, in the past, you used to um, add some contrast, and you can see that there's that there's more of a, uh, a, a definition between uh, the light areas and the dark areas, uh, which is which is your contrast. Um, but since uh, since the last year or so, um, a lot of the editing facilities have introduced um, the uh, the facility to do what's called dehaze, um, and in effect, it adds contrast, but it reduces some of the the um, the, the kind of grey whitey uh, haze that. That, that is evident in a lot of um, photos, especially uh, um, scenic photos that, uh, you know, when you've got mist and things like that. So generally speaking, I don't usually add contrast. What I will do is I'll go to this FX effects up at the top. And one of the options on here is dehaze. Um, if I go to the left of that, it makes it it adds haze, um, so it makes it hazy. It makes it like washed out. But if I go to the right, you can see that it's doing two things. It's adding contrast, but it's also increasing saturation, uh, and it's also getting rid of that haziness. So if we push right to the end, I mean we've got a, a very um, oversaturated surreal photo, but. Um, you don't want to go that far, but uh, I think um, I think pushing it to something like uh, maybe there um, thirty-eight, yeah. So maybe that's probably gone a bit too far. Let's, let's back that off to thirty-five. Now the, the downside of um, of adding um, uh, dehaze is that you'll end up with a lot of uh, again the, uh, a lot of digital noise, um, and you also tend to 
um, over or increase saturation which for us at the moment is not too bad because we've applied the look file um, but one thing that it has done is that if we've got we've now um, by adding that dehaze it's now pushed the uh, histogram towards more towards blacks so you can now see that the clipping highlights come on so we just need to move the blacks to the right hand side to stop that clipping okay so we've now got um, a, a picture that um, we can uh, see more definition in the sky um, we've got uh, still got areas of, uh, of shadow that um, uh, that should be there we've generally balanced as uh, as colors in terms of white balance uh, we've increase the shadow to be able to see some of this definition in the rocks and some of the um, reflections coming off those rocks um, what we might want to do is uh, increase um, maybe increase some saturation let's uh, let's add a bit of vibrance on and then Okay, so that's just added. I've just added a little bit of uh, saturation and vibrance just to, to give it a bit of a punch from the um, from the sunset. Um, but as you can see in the sky, there's quite a bit of uh, noise. If I zoom in, um, there's still quite a bit of digital noise on there. So what what we're going to do is, oops, let's go back to there. So if we now go to um, there's like a couple of trees or mountains or whatever they are which is uh, uh, when you hover over them they're called detail um, click on there and it goes in and we can do two things we can add sharpening um, now we don't really want to add any sharpening to this um, I think the video was on medium sharpening when I uh, recorded it and uh, I, I I don't think it needs any sharpening at all and then you've got um, noise reduction so you can add uh, noise reduction color noise reduction um, or you could add some really <laughs> uh, give it that watercolor effect add uh, luminance uh, noise reduction so what I tend to do on the um, uh, on the e4k is that is put it to 10 so put the luminance up up to 10 um, and uh, um, just takes an edge off of some of that um, noise that's in the sky um, okay so we've now got um, fairly balanced uh, in terms of the histogram um, uh, fairly balanced uh, image um, I'm happy that we've done the white balance we've um, got a fairly decent uh, saturation and we've applied a color lookup so if we um, I'm fairly happy with that there's nothing else I, uh, I want to change I maybe want to uh, we could do um, take some of the fish eye off um, which I'd done in a previous uh, previous uh, video um, we may want to uh, adjust that so yeah we'll, we'll uh, we could do that um, or we could leave it full screen um, I'll, I'll leave it full screen for now uh, the, the, the other video goes through how to to adjust that so I'm I'm fairly happy with that now so if we um, if we click OK so that's taking the, the image and it's then applied uh, the look that I, that I want to it so because we're in purple that has now been applied to every frame um, throughout the entire video so if we go back to the beginning where the Sun wasn't uh, wasn't showing um, we should see how that part of it looks so again we've got quite a bit of color definition um, and 
again yeah that look that looks fine um I go to the end yeah and that looks pretty uh, put looks pretty nice um and you know fairly close to to how it was maybe uh, a little bit more uh, oversaturated than I'd normally have uh, to be honest with you on on videos um but um but I think for this because it's a sunset it's um, it it looks pretty uh, look look looks all right um pretty happy with that so um okay so that's we we've adjusted it um next thing we need to do is just um uh, comp uh, uh render that uh, add to a video file so uh to render that we uh, go to this um little arrow that's in the bottom left hand corner uh, which is render video and you click on that um, comes up with a render video uh, number of options in here Just set whatever you need so select the folder where you want to put it the name of the file that you want to save it as um, the frame rate uh, the, the size of it whether, what format whether you want QuickTime or H.264 um whatever um, whatever you want or what quality you want and so on and so forth and uh, and that's it um when you've got your settings that you want you click on the render um and away it goes uh the only downside that i see with photoshop is uh, i said it in the previous video was that is the time it takes um to to do the editing um my my computer is not uh, not the fastest in the world but it's by no means the slowest and uh um it will take uh, something of this size it was probably going to take it 45 uh, minutes to an hour to uh, to export that video um so you know a lot it takes a lot longer than if i was doing similar adjustments in in uh, davinci or power direct or something like that um but it's um for, for me it's um i i find there's more control um using it and uh, i'm familiar with photoshop um uh, and uh it's it's something i prefer prefer to use um that um like i say that should take about 45 minutes and um and and then that's um that, that's everything done so um i hope this has been useful to anybody if anybody's got any questions or comments then um please add it to um to youtube thank you very much